Good morning, 488 in your hymnals, a new name in glory, 488. Let's all stand, shall we? Page 488. I was once a sinner, but I came pardon to receive from my Lord. This was freely given, and I found that He always kept His word. There's a new name written down in glory, and it's mine, oh yes, it's mine. And the heart will be to sing the story. y'all made it today. <laughs> um, this is not written in our policy book. If pastor is going to be sick, he needs to give us at least two weeks in advance notice. <laughs> so it's not. So I'm glad you're here. So let's have a word of prayer. Lord, I do thank you for the time you've given us to come to church, to hear your word, to worship you, God. We thank you for Jesus Christ who died for our sins, was buried and rose again and is alive in heaven, still working in the lives of men and women, boys and girls all over the world. Help us now, Lord. We thank you for all that you do in our lives. Help us never forget to praise you for all that you do. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. Page 480. 480. I want that mountain. Page 480. 
I saw the type of rarestness upon the mountain high. He left the heart and my unnamed No longer in the wilderness, I'll stay, and so I cry. I want that mountain, it belongs to me. I want that mountain, I want that mountain. Where the milk and honey flow, where the grapes of the snow grow. I want that mountain, I want that mountain. The mountain that my Lord has given me. On the second, there was a giant of laziness who said I couldn't go. come forward for our offering. I don't know if there's any visitors here, but if there are, welcome. If you are a visitor, you get a candy bar. So I think we are all visitors today, so I think we should all get candy bars. <laughs> That's what I always say when I'm up here. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, I do thank you for the time you've given us to give back to you a portion of what you've given to us. We thank you for that, Lord. We pray for our pastor while he's home because we know this is highly unusual. And so, Lord, he always tells us you have a reason for it. We don't know what it is. And uh, we just lift him up to you. We pray that you heal him and that you heal him quick. And we thank you for that. We thank you for the offering again and what you can do with it. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
99 in your hymnals, bringing in the sheaves, 499. Let's all stand, shall we? On the first verse, junior church and primary church, you may be dismissed. So in the morning, so in seeds of kindness, so in the The mixed quartet is going to come sing now. Bibles to Exodus chapter 14. Exodus chapter 14. It's where you get that phone call in the morning about your pastor being sick. And 
that's not written in the playbook, you know. It needs to give us a little bit more time to prepare. And, you know, then when you're at your job, it's like they make sure you call in two hours in advance, and it was two hours in advance. <laughs> so we had plenty of time, John. <laughs> so when my phone rang, I looked at it from the, across the room, and I go, I didn't set another alarm. What's it ringing for? <laughs> and it's like, oh, it wasn't the alarm. Exodus chapter 14. We all go through things. We all have problems. We all have, we all have situations. And the title of this would be, Is This a Red Sea Experience? To get a perspective on how we look at things. And so, is this a Red Sea Experience? In Exodus chapter 14, in verses 8 through 15, it says, And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh king of Egypt, and he pursued after the children of Israel, and the children of Israel went out with a high hand. But the Egyptians pursued after them, all the horses and chariots of Pharaoh, whoops, all the horses, all the horsemen, and his army, and overtook them, and camped by the sea beside Piahiroth, before Baal Zephon. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them, and they were so afraid, and the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. And they said unto Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore hast thou dealt with us to carry us forth out of Egypt? Is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, Let us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians? For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. The Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. Let's pray. Lord, I do thank you for the time that you've again given us to come to church, to hear your word, to help us live our lives here on earth. And Lord, help us get the right perspective as we look at things, as we go through things. We do lift our pastor up to you, Lord, because we love him and we care for him. And Lord, as we look at this scripture here for us, help us to have a right perspective of our God. Thank you, Lord. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. When we look at that, sometimes we, we look at our problems as if it's too big for us to handle, and most of the time it is. And, and we think that, how are we ever going to get through it? How are we ever going to make it? Um, some, I don't know whether it's the finances. I don't know whether you're going through marriage problems. I don't know if it's a job. It's, there's always something. Uh, preachers have always said you're either going through a trial, you're coming out of a trial, or you're getting ready to go into a trial. And so it's, a, it's non-stop for us Christians, because if we're on the top of the mountain, something's going to happen, and it's usually God opening up another area of our lives that he wants us to grow in. And then all of a sudden, we look at it as if we're down in the, in the valley of the shadow of death, wondering how in the world are we ever going to get out of this. And instead of walking high on the mountaintop, now all of a sudden we're crawling on our hands and knees. And it's just a Red Sea experience. We know the story that God brought the children of Israel out and they came up against the Red Sea. They were up against the Red Sea. The Egyptians were on the other side. And, and sometimes we go fa so fast through the scriptures that we don't take time to slow down and, and just ponder on it. And sometimes that gets me in trouble because I think too much on it. But here they are up against the Red Sea. And, and our verse 15, God tells them to go forward. Just go forward. And we look at it, if we were standing there by the Red Sea, we'd sit there and look at God and go, how do you expect me to do that? 
And God just says, go forward. When they were crossing the Jordan with Joshua, by the time they went to step one foot, the, the water cleared. The priest took another step and the water cleared. And sometimes we get stuck in our problem, our situation, and we just want to, I don't know, we just want to sit on the couch and go, Lord, I don't know what I want to do now. How am I going to get out of this? And all of a sudden, we, we don't go to work, or we stop coming to church, or we stop praying because we're in a situation we don't know how to get out of it, and we're sitting there looking at the Red Sea going, <sighs> and God just wants us to go forward. Don't stop coming to church. Don't stop praying. <laughs> Don't stop going to your job. Okay, we all need money still. It pays our bills. But he tells them to go forward, and sometimes we stop, and it's just a Red Sea experience. It's just the Red Sea. God just blew it open. And they crossed on dry ground. And sometimes we... We're from this side of the Red Sea to this side of the Red Sea, and the Red Sea is already closed over, and we forgot about the path going through. We forgot about God just, I don't know, this is our human, my human intellect. There it was. The pictures never do it justice because the pictures show this little of a path for millions of people to go through. I'm sure it was, it was super wide. And God just blew it open. And so no matter what we're going through, God's just going to blow it open. And we just need to go forward. And sometimes we get stuck at where we're at, and we don't move. And he just wants us to grow. We we get so close to God in, in, in an area in our life, and, and God opens up another area. He just wants us to get closer to him. He just wants us to grow so we keep getting closer to our God. And we look at it as if, I'll never get through this. It might be months. It might be years that you're going through the same thing, but are you, have you been sitting for seven years or eight years or ten years right here? And God's up there going, go forward, go forward. And we're sitting there going, I can't. And he's saying, go forward. But I'm looking at the Red Sea, how can I move on? And he says, go forward. And, and uh, we don't sit in a church anymore. We don't sit in our pew anymore. Because we've, God just wants us to get closer to him. And we get frustrated, and we look at the Red Sea as if, I'll ne I can't swim across that. I can't even swim. But do we think about God just whew, blowing it open? We don't know why we go through things, but it's just a Red Sea experience. In Exodus chapter 2, verse 8, Well, that's not the verse that I wanted. <laughs> so, let me go to... <clears throat> Anyways, my idea was God has a plan. <laughs> As they were in Egypt, and God was calling them out, and God had called Moses to go deliver them. God had a plan to get the people out of Egypt. As we go through our problems, as we go through our frustrations, as we go through our growth. God has a plan. Sometimes I wish he'd write it down so we could read what he's going to do in our lives. Okay, I know what God's going to do next. I'll get through it. I know God wants me to go forward. Ooh, I don't know if I would like that, but that's God's plan. Sometimes if we read God's plan, we wouldn't do it anyways because it would be too hard. But that's how we grow. But God had a plan, and he picked Moses. 
And again, what did Moses do? Oh, I can't talk. Oh, I'm not able to. Send somebody else. And, and as I was thinking about this, I was thinking of my phone call. Do you need to preach this morning? Oh, I can't do it. Oh, what am I going to say? And here, God has a plan. He knew Pastor was going to be sick, I don't know how long ago, before eternity started. And it's just a Red Sea experience. God's just going to blow it open. And sometimes we get it all out of perspective, but God has a plan in our lives. And if we're saved, if we're born again, and, and we, we're falling in love with Jesus Christ, sometimes we forget the aspect that our God cares for us. When we go this way in our life, He cares for us. When we go that way in our life, He cares for us. When we're down in the valley, He cares for us. When we're up on the mountaintop, He doesn't take His eyes off of us. He doesn't take His hands off of us. He's still there. He's still directing. And then all of a sudden, when we're on the mountaintop, it's great living. But when He wants us to get closer to Him, and He opens up an area of our life, and all of a sudden it seems like we're down in the valley... Could it be that we're still on the mountaintop walking on a plane and he just wants us to grow? It's just a Red Sea experience. God's just going to blow it open. And we get it all out of perspective. Why did God do this to me? Why is God putting me through this? Why am I going through this problem? Why am I not having a job? Why are they getting mad at me? And all of a sudden we get so frustrated and we forget about the aspect that our God cares for us and He loves us and it's just a Red Sea experience. It's going to blow it wide open. And we're going to walk across dry ground as if we're still on the mountaintop. It's just a plain. We're still walking up there. But we lose the perspective that God loves us and He cares for us and we think we're down in the valley of the shadow of death with nowhere to go. And God says, I want you to go forward. And if you were standing by the Red Sea and you had the Egyptians behind you, God, there's something wrong with this picture. And God's saying, no, there isn't. I want you to go forward. And so God always has a plan. God always has a plan. Exodus chapter 4. Verse 1, And Moses answered and said, But behold, they will not believe me, nor hearken unto my voice, for they will say that the Lord hath not appeared unto thee. And the Lord said unto him, What is that in thine hand? And he said, A rod. And he said, Cast it to the ground. And again, if we know the story, it turned into a serpent. He said to pick it up. Hand went leprous, leprous pulled it out, and it was it cured it. And so God gives indicators that he can do it. If we've read through the whole scriptures, if we've read through the entire Bible, and here in Exodus, he has the ten plagues. He brings two million plus people out of Egypt from the strongest army in that day and age, and he brings them out with a high hand. They never lifted a hand. They never had a shotgun or a rifle or any artillery and they walked out with a high hand, and we read through the scriptures, and we read through the New Testament, and we read that all that Jesus did, and all the healing, and all the feeding, and we know all the miracles that he can do, and if we believe God, and if we're saved, and even in Genesis, the creation of heavens and the earth, and all that he did, and he created everything, and all of a sudden, we're in our situation, how's God going to get me out of this one? And we lose our perspective of who our God is. He created everything. What is there that he cannot do? He wants us to get closer to him. And every time we go through something, we think that we're in the valley of the shadow of death, and I'm just as guilty of this, instead of on the mountaintop just walking on a plane up there. God gave indicators to Moses that he could do this. And Moses goes and, and he went through the ten plagues and sometimes, this is where I think too much, if I could have been there with Moses, if I could have watched him take that stick into the river and, and blood, wow, 
How could I not trust this God? And then all of a sudden, the flies and the lice and, and the, the hail and the fire. and Wow. How can I not trust my God? And then all of a sudden, here comes the death angel and we sacrifice the lamb and we put the blood on our doorpost. This is where I probably would have gotten in trouble because I would have wanted to peek out the window to see him come, to see what was really happening, to see if I could see it. And, and by faith, do we live by faith? Man, sometimes I just want to see it. But we read it. We look in every one of our lives of what we were before. And then salvation happened. I didn't know everything in the scriptures, but I knew it was a sinner. And I knew Jesus died for my sin. He didn't die for your sin, but he died for my sin. And I trusted him, and I asked Christ to save me. And he did. I didn't know everything about this Bible. I still don't. But at that point in time, I trusted him for dying for my sins, and I accepted him by faith. And now my life is, is, is all after that. And God just wants us to get closer to him. And so he's given indicators that he can do that. In your lives, in my lives, in the lives of other Christians around the world that we hear. Of how they, they were in sin and they were saved out of it. They were alcoholics and they were saved out of it. They were druggies and they got saved out of it. They were wife beaters or husband beaters or maybe they were just... <laughs> they were the kids we hated in school because they were just good. They never got in trouble. They were always the best students. But they were still sinners. And they had to confess that they were a sinner, and they got saved. And so we see indicators. We see lives all around us on what God can do into the lives of people, and we forget that when we're going through it. And it's just a Red Sea experience. He just blew it open. And so he gives us indicators. In Exodus chapter 7, verse 3, God says, And I will harden Pharaoh's heart and multiply my signs and my wonders in the land of Egypt. There will be oppositions. So others will see God through you and through me. There's always opposition in our lives. Always. And sometimes we don't know why. <laughs> what did I do? <laughs> you know? But it's just God working in our lives so that others around us can see God. So others around us, when they see us up against the Red Sea and they see Pharaoh's army behind us and we're right in the middle. And, and we think of the scriptures, or you'll think of it now, you'll think of Fred saying, Go forward! And as a Christian, I just can't sit around anymore. I just got to keep going. We hear of our missionaries, and we hear of other Christians when, when their wife or their husband die or their children die, and, and, and they keep going. They, they go forward. They, they don't sit down and say, I'm not doing nothing for the Lord no more. They, they, they go forward. And so there's indicators all around us, and have we lost perspective of who our God is? He loves us. He cares for us. He saved us. He sent his son to die for us. The opposition's going to come. But it's just a Red Sea experience. It's just going to blow it right out of our way. So we can just keep living for the Lord and just walking for the Lord. In Exodus 14, verse 1, it says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, that they turn and encamp before Parahiroth, between Magol and the sea, over against Baal Zephon. Before it shall ye encamp by the sea. For Pharaoh will say to the children of Israel, They are entangled in the land, in the wilderness, has shut them in. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart, and he shall follow after them. 
and I will be honored upon Pharaoh and upon all his hosts, that the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord, and they did so. And it was told the king of Egypt that the people fled, and the heart of Pharaoh and his servants were turned against the people, and they said, Why have we done this, that we have let Israel go from serving us? And they made ready his chariots and took his people with him. And he took 600 chosen chariots and all the chariots of Egypt, the captains over every one of them. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he pursued after the children of Israel. And the children of Israel went out with a high hand, but the Egyptians pursued after them, all the horses and chariots of Pharaoh, and all the horsemen in his army, and took and overtook them and camping by the sea. Moses knew the plan at this point. Not everyone knew the plan. But God has a plan. Sometimes he doesn't tell us the plan. But we need to realize that God has a plan for us. Every one of our lives. And what your plan is, he doesn't tell me. And what God's plan for me is, he doesn't tell you. But we just need to keep going forward. The opposition is going to be there. I don't know who God has hardened the hearts of the people that get in front of us. And they just need to see us go forward. And we just need to realize it's just a Red Sea experience. The people that he hardens that puts in front of us and we just keep going forward. One of these days they're going to realize that we serve a God that created heaven and earth. And sometimes we lose that perspective. And we just need to realize that. And so Moses knew God's plan. And I'm sure he was a little bit nervous too. Because if I was the one leading all you when we were standing in front of the Red Sea and everybody's ready to shoot me and get rid of me, and here I am saying, just stand still. And see the salvation of the Lord. And you're all going to look at me like I'm nuts. You're going to say, the Red Sea's right there, Fred. See it? <laughs> it's pretty tall. It's pretty deep. See the Egyptian spot? That, that's their whole army. And you're telling us to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord? What's he going to do? Open up the Red Sea for us? what he's going to do our mouths are going to drop <laughs> we're going to walk across the red sea run across the red sea but moses knew the plan sometimes we know what god's doing in our lives the directions that he's heading us the the path that he wants us to take are we going to know everything absolutely not are we are there going to be ups or i should say are there going to be downs are there going to be ups they certainly are but it's going to be us getting closer to God and trusting in God. And no matter what we go through, instead of thinking we're in the valley of the shadow of death, we're just going to be on the mountaintop just walking on the plain. And God's going to be working in our lives and we're just going to keep going forward. And He's going to keep opening up that Red Sea for us. Opposition's going to come. People are going to get in front of us. People are going to hate us for no cause. And we know that. But God tells us that. We already know the plan that God's going to do that. And we just need to keep going forward. Remember that God loves us and he cares for us. He saved us. He sent his only son to die for us. And we lose that perspective sometimes. And so God has a plan. Verse 14 Chapter 14, verse 31, it says, And Israel saw the great work which the Lord did upon the Egyptians. And the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and his servant Moses. God continues with his plan. And the people saw it. And the people feared the Lord. But we read the scriptures and, and, and so often... We lose sight of the Lord. 
And instead of being on that mountaintop, walking on that plain, we lose sight of the Lord, and all of a sudden we find ourselves in the valley. Because things are so good. And maybe they're so good, and, and without realizing it, I just haven't prayed for a couple days. And without realizing it, my Bible's still sitting where it's been sitting for the last five days. Because I'm, I'm still, man, it was great. Did you see what the Lord did? Killed all the Egyptians. Man, it was wonderful. Did you see it? We walked across dry ground. I wonder how God, whew, he just opened it up and we crossed. Man, it was great. Oh, man, that was great when we crossed it. All the Egyptians, they, they died. And, and, and we, we, we forgot the fear of the Lord. Because we were on the mountaintop. We were enjoying life. We were enjoying God, and, and we just forgot to talk to him because life was going great. Forgot to talk to him because, man, my bills have been paid on time. <laughs> That's great. Forgot to come to church because they needed extra help at the job, and... and I usually don't work on Sundays, but they just needed it this time, and then all of a sudden it was next time, and all of a sudden it was the next time, and we see Pastor at Menards or, or at Myers, and he says, Hey, I haven't seen you for a while. And he goes, just, you know, I just missed one week. And he says, Man, it's been three months. And you go, No. We, we, we were on that mountaintop thinking of all the stuff God did in our lives, and and we forgot to fear God. And so we need to keep that perspective that God loves us. But we need to keep serving Him. couple thoughts here. We need to trust our preacher. And all will be blessed. Our preacher goes through things that we don't know about. Probably people that call him, people that want to come here, people that want to preach at the pulpit. And, and, and he just, nope, nope. Music groups, who knows? Nope, we're not going to have you. No, we're not going to do that. Sorry you can't come. Ah, that's not our style. Sorry we're going to trust in the Lord. And, and I don't know, sometimes... We might get upset at the pastor because, well, I think they're great. Man, pastor spends a lot more time with God than we do. Checking everything out, looking at their backgrounds, where they've been before, what they've done before. Can you imagine if some of the people told Moses, you know what, Moses, we're not going to go across the Red Sea with you. We're going to stay here. I'm sure Pharaoh's going to look kindly on us. And we're going to stay here and we're going to serve him. Do you think Pharaoh would have taken him in or do you think Pharaoh would have... Even though they might not have trusted Moses, maybe they didn't understand Moses, maybe they just thought Moses was nuts. And when they seen the... Man, we just better go with them just in case. And everyone that followed Moses was blessed. When we follow our pastor, we're going to be blessed. Might not understand everything, but when we follow our pastor, we're all going to be blessed. Might not understand why he turned some down and, and accepted some, but if we follow the pastor, we're going to be blessed. God's plan is too big for me, but it's not for God. So when God does it, we know God did it, because I couldn't do it. Because if I'm looking at the Red Sea and I'm looking at Pharaoh's army behind me, there's no possible way. Lord, even if I began to swim, <laughs> I wouldn't make it. How are you going to get me to go forward? You keep telling me to go forward. How can I go forward? And we stand there and look at it instead of going forward. 
And, and God just, whew, just blew it open. How can I get through this? Who's going to hire me now? How am I going to make this to work? And, and Lord, I don't see no possible way of this working. And, and sometimes this is where we get. And we, we need to go forward. You know, Lord, I don't know how you're going to do that. But this is what I'm going to do tomorrow. Lord, I don't know how you're going to do it, but I'm going to keep going. Lord, I don't know how you're going to do it, but I'm going to keep going. And then before we know it, we're on the other side of the Red Sea. And we just allow God to work in our lives. Because we trusted in him. And we feared him. It might be a week. It might be a month. It might be years for us to walk through the Red Sea. But the idea is, he blew it open for us. And sometimes we lose that. And so when we get through it, everybody's going to know that God did it. Because there's no humanly way we could have done it ourselves. God just blew the Red Sea open. Our job is to obey Stand still, but move forward. In Exodus 14, 15, it says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. I don't know, where's that, where's that balance of standing still, but then going forward and just knowing the Lord's going to open it and let the Lord work in our lives. God put the Red Sea there not to stop you, but God put it there for a specific purpose, for us to go through it, for us to remember it. And sometimes we go through it, and then all of a sudden we forget all that God's done. We get in a situation in life and we just think God can't do anything. And we forget about Genesis, where he made heaven and earth out of nothing. Forget about the ten plagues where he delivered his children out of the Egyptian army with a high hand. We forget about all the stuff that Jesus did in the New Testament, how he brought the dead back to life, who who were dead. They were buried. He fed them fish and some bread. He cured them. Made him see. And we forget that as if he can't do that to me. But he can. And when he does, the people around will realize that it was God. Just blew open the Red Sea. So what are we going through now? Is it just a Red Sea experience? In Isaiah... Chapter 43, verse 11, it says, I, even I am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. It's God. And verse 44 in Isaiah, chapter 44, verse 6, says, Thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel, and His Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first, and I am the last, and beside me there is no God. Isaiah 45, verses 5 and 6. I am the Lord, and there is none else. There is no God beside me. I girded thee, though thou hast not known me, that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none beside me. I am the Lord. And there is none else. And then in verse 18, it says, For thus saith the Lord that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth and made it, he hath established it. He created it not in vain. He formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord, and there is none else. We serve God. Created heaven and earth. And he wants us to have a better relationship with him. Just wants us to grow. And so the things we're going through, it's 
just a Red Sea experience. He saved us. At some point in our life, we realize that He is God, and there is none else. And so we confessed our sin. We asked Him to save us. And He's given us a life everlasting. One of these days, we're going to be in heaven with Him. But till then, the things we go through, the, the things we come up against, is it just a Red Sea experience? Let's pray. Lord, I do thank you for the time you've given us to come to church. And Lord, some of the things that we go through, to us, we think there's no way out. If it lasts longer than a week or a month, we figure there's no way out. If it lasts a year or two years and we're still struggling with it, you just want us to grow. You want us to keep going forward. Help us, Lord. Help us to keep going forward. Whether it's been a week, whether it's been a month, whether it's been a year, help us to keep going forward. Help us to keep fearing you. Help us to keep serving you. Help us not to sit and just look at it and think there's no way out. Help us to take one step at a time. Help us to know that to you it's just a and you blow it open for us. Thank you, Lord. I pray in Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand and sing just as I am. And again, if, if you're not saved, let today be the day of your salvation. And if there's anything you need to get right with the Lord, as Pastor always says, the altars are always open for you to talk. So let's sing Just As I Am. 167. 167. time you've given us. And Lord, it's you that can cleanse our spot. Lord, help us to allow you to do that. Help us to know the things that we go through is so we can have a better relationship with our God, with our Savior. And we thank you for that, Lord. Thank you for all that you do in our lives. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.